Michael Buffer, great honour to meet you, sir. Um, I trust the people of Manchester are making you feel very welcome. Uh, yeah, I've been here many times too, so it's always a pleasure to come back. When you get the call to come out here to announce Ricky Hatton's comeback, I'm guessing it didn't take long to think about. Uh, I, in an instant, I was ready to go. It's, um, uh, it's, he has such a fan base here and all over the UK, of course, but uh, the fact that they sold out the MEN Arena uh, in a day or two without even naming an opponent is a, is a tribute to his popularity. What's your relationship with Ricky like? I, whenever I see him come on the stage and greet you, there's always a little glint in his eye. There's a, there's a little bond there, isn't there? There's a glint in, in my eye too, because there's. A, um, I'm always a fan, and uh, and to to know somebody like Ricky and and to feel his vibes, and you know, even when when Ricky would go to uh, Las Vegas, <clears throat> pardon me, thousands and thousands of his fans would come, knowing they couldn't get in the fight. But just to be in the same hotel, just to be on the same terra firma that, uh, where Ricky is fighting, they would be there, they would buy tickets, they would watch it in closed circuit rooms around Las Vegas, and, and uh, he just brought all this electricity. So it's always great to be around Ricky Hatton. And, you know, he brings the band, he brings the fans, he, he brings all the excitement that you want to see at a big fight. There were many of us that were privileged to be in Las Vegas for, mm. for many of those fights. The Mayweather and the Pacquiao weigh-ins always stand out to me as great events. Were they unusual, or is, is other boxers in the States that can pull that kind of crowd for a weigh-in? Uh, they were the exception rather than the rule. If we have two or 3,000 for a big fight weigh-in with Pacquiao uh, or Mayweather, uh, it would be standing room only with five or 6,000 in the MGM uh, arena. They would portion a whole portion off just for the, you know, the weigh-in. And uh, they were always uh, ex exceptionally large and loud. Okay, I've got to ask you about Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Mm -hmm. How did it all begin? Well, you know, tonight's a good example of the electricity that happens when fighters come to the ring. I mean, there's nothing better than Ricky Hatton making an entrance in, in uh, Manchester Arena. And what happens, uh, when I first started, I noticed the ring announcers were, uh, myself included, we had to introduce all these commissioners, you know, at a big fight, including uh, the visiting commission. So you'd have, a, like, the state of Nevada with their chairman, executive director, four commissioners, four doctors, three judges, a referee, maybe a WBA, WBC guy, and a supervisor, and you're killing the crowd. I mean, just, just killing the crowd, all that electricity, and then everything has to shut up and listen to the, you know, us babble on introducing all these guys. They don't do it at football games, but they have to do it for boxing. And so I wanted a hook. I wanted something that would let the fans know, now I'm going to introduce the stars of the show, uh, and it's their turn. Now it's a popular expression before auto racing where they say, Gentlemen, start your engines. And everybody goes crazy because that means one thing, the race is about to begin. So I wanted a phrase or I wanted something that I could say or do that would let everyone know they're, they're about to meet the stars of the show and the fight will begin. And I tried to uh, man your battle stations and uh, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts and that, that wasn't going anywhere. And of course, Muhammad Ali used to always say, you know, oh, I'm so pretty, I'm ready to rumble. And I kind of fine tuned that to uh, what you hear today with Let's Get Ready to Rumble. And how long will you do this for? Will you just keep doing it? Uh, I'm 68 and uh, I thought I'd be retired by now, but uh, uh, as long as the pipes hold up, I guess. You know, I enjoy it so much and I'm such a fan that I, I think I'll stay with it for a while longer. Now you'll be introducing Ricky into the ring tonight. Just mm -hmm. talk us through how you do that. Well, uh, it depends on uh, whether TV people want, want me to do the, uh, the, the intro announcement, which is say, you know, now I'm coming to the ring, you know. And, of course, the place will go, you know, electric with that. And then after I introduce all the uh, officials, as I mentioned before, and uh, after uh, it's the three judges and then the referee comes last, and then that's when I kind of set the stage. And I think tonight I might go that, that little extra mile and because uh, the fans are just like, they're so hot here in Manchester. Uh, I might give it one of those, uh, you know, are you ready, Manchester, are you ready? You know, like, and really, really set the stage for the, the big pop. And, and for the introduction of Ricky himself, this mm -hmm. is a long drawn out process too. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do try to be um, fair uh, with, uh, with each fighter. I don't, you don't really want to overdo it with the hometown hero, and let, but let the, let the fans speak for themselves. So um, uh, I, I think it'll be a big introduction. I have to do it for both fighters. 
but uh, I think uh, they better get the, the decimeter out to just measure the, uh, the volume of noise in the arena tonight.